let me ask you. Assuming, <laughs> assuming Christ is number one, who are um, or what is your other three top priorities? Well, uh, the Bible speaks about family. Family has to be your foundation. And, and you know, you think about this, and, and this for all y'all ministers and knowing your purpose and everything else, if you're not taking care of the home front, right. amen, if, if um, one time, you know, when the Lord had called me to pastor, uh, I went to this older brother, I said, well, I don't know about, you know, I told this brother, I said, I don't know if I have what it takes to be a pastor, but I feel this calling on me. And he says, no, brother, I know you got what it takes because your wife is sitting there happy and she's following you wherever you go. So you already pastor in one. Yeah. Amen. So when you take care of family, when you take, a, take care of family, then that's the beginning of your ministry. So now keep in mind, there's a lot of ministers out there. I, I know you heard about the preacher's kids. Amen. Where the preacher is so busy saving the world that the whole household is a mess. Uh -huh. So my priority, uh, I always start, there's no sense in me going out and saving the world unless my wife is being blessed. Now, I don't allow my wife to keep me home from ministering out there, but I always make sure that I make sure my wife is all right. Because if you're not making sure that your wife and your family is all right, I make sure I check on my parents and my dad's down there in Fayetteville, North Kakalaki, and I drive down there regularly to check on him and make sure he's straight. Because family has got to be straight. Because if you're not taking care of family, then you're not taking care of anything. Okay, that's the beginning of your ministry. It's not the end of your ministry. It's the beginning of your ministry. Amen. But um, I want to talk about another. It's, it's a causal root of what happens when you, uh, when you become too religious. Because a lot of these religious buildings, what they do is they have you out there. And the first thing you're going to hear about when you hit the building is you're going to hear about a tithe. And you're going to hear about a tithe before you hear about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And a lot of these religious buildings, they, um, you... I just want to thank the Lord because my wife and I are five years out of credit card debt, out of being in debt. Amen? And what got us out, when we first came to the Lord, we had $70,000 worth of debt hanging over our head. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Now we don't even have a card note. No credit card debt, no card note, no anything. And what got us out of there? Well, while I recommend the budget, relationship before the budget, because you ain't going to be able to follow the budget unless you got relationship. Because guess what we had to do? We had, For a little while, we had to turn off the cable. We had to turn off stuff. Oh, y'all ain't like, there ain't no amens on that one, amen? For a couple years, we had to turn stuff off. And all it was was just us and the Lord. Yeah. So that's what cultivated relationship. So if you out of debt, you need relationship to get out of debt. Because why do you spend so much? Right. Why do you get into debt? Mm -hmm. Because you're trying to get your mind off of what God is trying to tell you. Uh -huh. That's why you spend so much. <clears throat> because you're trying to fill that hole in your heart by buying the next gadget. Yeah. By yeah. buying the next thing. By going to Walmart. I bet you if you checked your Walmart receipts, you probably paid $500, $600 a month just in Walmart alone. So if you have relationships, you can stay home and enjoy one another. If you have relationship, then you're not so pressed over what clothes you're wearing. Yes. If yes. you have relationship, yes. you can get by and you don't need the next sale and the next That's thing right. and the next car and the next this and the next that. Because guess what? I have freedom. I have freedom to teach. I, I don't want to now, but I could lose my job if I had to. Amen? I can walk off it because I'm free from being in debt. Amen? And, I, and this next poem is about... What happens to you when you get all this debt on you? And you get all this stuff hanging on you. What could happen? And this is an amalgam. It's two stories put together. But in, in, you know, taking these two stories, it becomes a, 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 a one true story, one together. Now, what I want, if you could look, turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, neighbor. this is about credit card debt. This, <laughs> this ain't about the war. Carolina loves the troops. <laughs> and Carolina loves the Marine Corps. Amen. So this is not an anti-American song. Okay. This is a credit. This is against credit card debt. Praise the Lord. So this piece is called the Corporation. And Romans chapter thirteen, verse eight says, "Owe no man anything, but to love one another. For he that loveth another." Have fulfilled the law. 
And one other disclaimer before I start. I am not I, I mentioned the church in this poem. I am not talking about the true church. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about religion. Yeah. Amen? Okay. Amen. Credit card applications, devil's trap is what you're facing. Inside your books is where they're placed in commercial divinations. State colleges got sponsors too, and they paid well to get to you. You were 18 when they got you started. Socioeconomic demographic target. Part-time worker with a thousand dollar limit. Now you in debt and you don't know how you did it. Your child fair is now an auction because your debt has got you boxed in. Once you owe, you are a slave, and they shall teach how to behave. Ethnic ethos, you must trade in. Dreadlocks, you must fade in. Baggy pants for khaki britches. Ride or die for corporate snitches. No culmination to your assimilation. Cause you like spending like you out of control. Parsing a little bit for your spirit and soul. Now you go and make matters worse. You take your bills and run the church. Tired of all the games and the lies. The corporation you now despise. You run the church for the surprise. No Jesus there. Just ties, ties, ties. <laughs> The blood of Christ is now a business marketing plan instead of faithful witness. Pastors been replaced by CEOs. No brothers, no sisters, just tricks and hoes. You gotta pay to stay and pay to play. A religious observation, just another corporation. Prosperity messages, but you still losing power. Pockets getting lighter while your soul getting sour. It's <clears throat> Pockets getting lighter while your soul getting sour. Pockets getting lighter while your soul getting sour. My, my love it. Pockets getting lighter while your soul getting sour. Spiritual devastation, worshiping at a corporation.